happy Friday morning. I would have slept in had a little somebody not crept into bed with me and told me, go, go do your video. So here I am, even though I want to be sleeping. But anyway, <laughs> today is uh, November 1st, and thank you for being here. Thank you for joining me for my daily Come Follow Me study of the Book of Mormon. I appreciate it. We're in the home stretch of not only the year, but the Book of Mormon. Um, so let's start off with a prayer before my rambling gets ahead of me. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this day. We are grateful for thy love and support and kindness. We are grateful for the many blessings that we enjoy, for the opportunity to be better disciples of thee. We're grateful for the scriptures and for this opportunity to come together as YouTube friends and um, study the gospel together. We're grateful for thy love and support and kindness. I know I said that, but every day I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful for all that thou has blessed me with. I'm very blessed and I'm grateful for the love that thou showers down upon me. I ask thee to please watch over and bless those who are struggling this day, that they will find answers to their prayers and understand those answers if they're not answered in the way they like. We love thee, Father, so very much. And we say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right. So, today is daily reflection. Every day I almost forget. <sighs> okay. November 1st. Behold, it is written by them of old time that thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery already in his heart. Third Nephi chapter 12 verses 27 through 28. The Sermon at Bountiful is a divine invitation, a call, a call to a higher righteousness, in which Jesus applied a principle called fencing the Torah. If, for example, a man establishes a personal commandment for himself that he will not partake of alcoholic beverages, then he makes a possibility for keeping that resolve more likely if he avoids walking or driving past the liquor store or the bar. A person who has been caught up in a web of internet pornography is seeking to avoid further entanglements. He would do well to avoid using the computer in private. Jesus instructs us that a key to controlling our behavior is to maintain proper control of our thoughts. No one leaps into lecherous behavior without forethought. No one violates temple covenants without planning to do so. If we allow virtue to garnish our thoughts unceasingly, we will be kept from serious sin and will grow confident in the presence of God. Okay. <sighs> now we get into it. Today is Mormon chapter 4, and this one's a fun one, war and carnage continue, the wicked punish the wicked, greater wickedness prevails than ever before in all Israel, women and children are sacrificed to idols, the Lamanites begin to sweep the Nephites before them. I can't find Christ anywhere in these chapters. If it wasn't for Mormon saying how much he laments the state of his people, there would be no, no, um, what word? No, uh, a ray of sunshine through the cloud. Even if it's that, that tiny sliver, you know? 
that like you can barely see that's like all dusty and stuff that's all that's there is that dusty little ray because mormon's there and that's it and he's not very happy with the state of his people um sacrificing women and children they can't get to hell fast enough i swear these people um the only gratitude because that's what we're looking for this month gratitude is that i don't live in this time that's i'm grateful that the united states of america hasn't gotten this far yet although it's creeping there with the abortion talk you know You know, Mormon just kind of has to go, I got to get out of here. I got to go. I, like, I'm going to, I'm going to be struck by lightning just by standing next to you people. Like, I got to go be in some cabin in the woods. I got to take my son, my family. I got to go. We got to go. But, of course, they don't because we know, we know what happens. Okay. Commentary. Oh, good, it's a short one because there's nothing good in this chapter at all. It is by the wicked that the wicked are punished. In the eternal design of a just God, it is often the wicked who exact the ultimate penalty from the wicked. Those who cultivate bloodshed often fall victim to their own snares and lethal devices, being hoist, hoist with their own petard as a common maxim expresses it. Then they give an evidence about sacrificing women and children, which I'm not going to, we're not going to get into that. <laughs> Hoisted with their own petard. That, uh, does that have reference to Ivan the Terrible? No, Vlad the Impaler. That's who. Dracula. All right. Oh, I changed the word. I forgot to change the calendar. Ah, of course. 306. N. Eldon Tanner, prayer makes us better people. As I think back to when we used to kneel as a family in prayer every morning and every evening, I realize what it meant to us as children to hear our father call upon the Lord and actually talk to him, expressing his gratitude and asking for the blessings of the Lord on his crop and flocks and all of our undertakings. It always gave us greater strength to meet temptation when we remembered that we would be reporting to the Lord at night. Family prayer is in any home will draw the family closer together and result in better feelings between father and mother, between parents and children, and between one child and another. If children pray for their parents, it makes them more appreciative of their parents. And as they pray for one another, they feel closer to one another and part of each other, especially as they realize that they are t talking to their father in heaven while on their knees in family or secret prayer. Then is when we forget our differences and think of the best in others and pray for their well-being and for strength to overcome our own weaknesses. There is no doubt that we are better people when we try to tune into the spirit of our Father in heaven so that we might communicate with him and express our desire to do his will as we pray for his blessings. <sighs> okay, that was Mormon chapter 4, and tomorrow we do Mormon chapter 5. We're going to end it with a read it, do it here in, the min in a minute. I just want to take a quick look. I wanted to see if there was any... Oh, that's Christmas week. I see. Gotcha. In December, we do a lot of general conference study.
Okay. Um, yeah, let's do our read it, do it. November 1st. Mormon chapter 4, they highlight verse 23. When the Lamanites are about to overthrow the land, Mormon thinks it best to hide the records. He goes to a familiar place that he knows is safe up to the hill. Do you have a place to connect with God when life feels troubled? Visit that place. All right. Let's end it off with a prayer. Wasn't a very cheery one today, but you know, it is what it is. These Lamanites just straight down. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this day. We are grateful for the lessons learned in the scriptures. And we're so thankful that we have our days now instead of the days of Mormon. Please bless us that we can be like him in being the bright spot in a wicked world. Help us to be in the world, but not of the world. And help us to, <coughs> to do our part to not let the world get that wicked help our righteousness to spread and that we may do thy will each and every day and be better disciples of thee we're grateful for thy love we're grateful for thy blessings we're grateful for the internet and for the gospel we ask thee to please bless those who are suffering that they may be comforted <clears throat> And have their hearts turned towards thee. We love thee, Father, so very much. And we say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Alrighty. We will see you tomorrow.